I recorded this video while away. I was not at my house, so I did not have my mic on me. So I recorded this with my, on my computer without my mic. So the audio quality is very low. Is a little bit lower. And there was also this weird ticking in the background. There was nothing I could do about it, and I am very sorry. But I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Dragon Ball Super Episode 41 Review. So, if you ask me, this episode is three parts. The first part is, of course, the part of the Omni King. So, the Omni King so shows up, and he pretty much shows up, and he has everybody bowing to him, introducing to him. Of course, you have Goku who just wants to talk to him like anybody else. Goku does not care that he is pretty much the god of everything. According to Beerus, this man, can, the Omni King, can destroy the universe, all 12 universes, in a blink of an eye. However, I do want to talk about that because I disagree, and I disagree with everybody in the fandom when they say he is strong. The Omni King would describe as the god of all 12 universes. So, in my opinion, I would think maybe one of his abilities as the god or, you know, Omni King, as the Omni King, which is practically the god of the 12 universes, as the Overseer, I would say one of his abilities would be to have control over the 12 universes. So I don't think he can produce a key blast strong enough to destroy the 12 universes. I think he can just naturally make them disappear. For him, making the 12 universes disappear in an instant would be the same kind of thing as Kami creating the Dragon Ball. I think it would be a natural ability. However, now that I've gone over that, I'll talk about the rest of the episode and what the Omni King said when he was there. When asked by Beerus or Champa, I forgot which one, but when asked why he was there, he responded with he noticed that they had both been ignoring the role of the God of Destruction, and he asked, and he said he, maybe they should be replaced. Champa and Beerus freak out, and he said, no, I'm just kidding. We can't replace the two of you. However, this is where things get interesting. The Omni King mentioned that he was impressed by the fight between Goku and Hit. He was very impressed and he wanted to see more of it. He later on explained that he would like to see a tournament take place later on in which contestants from all 12 universes compete. So it would be probably the same amount of fighters, so like 5 fighters from each one of the 12 universes. And I would assume each team will be led by the God of Destruction of that particular universe. So my thoughts on a multiversal tournament, I think it's stupid and a waste of our time. My thing is, is that we just have a tournament between the two universes. I feel like it's just a copy of this idea. they will be just expanded into having more characters. And pretty much an excuse for Toriyama to follow through on his promise of showing us all 12 universes. However, I do not mind because at the moment we had no information that could be completely different from a tournament we just got. Could be brand new ideas and could be really interesting. I just have a tendency to disagree with that. I see it being very similar like how we had the Tenkaichi Budokais in Dragon Ball which were also very similar to each other. But were enjoyable. But then again, Toriyama was in his prime back then, and the writing of the series was much, much better. I don't know if the story could survive at this point with a cart with a nearly carbon copy arc every time. So the Omni King leaves, and Team Champa and Team Beer part ways and go back to the respected universe. It is revealed that the nameless planet is in fact the seven. Uh, Super Dragon Ball. So, if you were predicting that, congratulations, you're a genius. You predicted it. Good for you. So now I really just need to talk about the visuals of when they summoned it after we blew off all the debris. It was really cool, the visual for summoning the Super Shenlong. Yep, I am going to call him Super Shenlong. Because in the Japanese version, it is Shenlong, not Shenron. But 
yeah, so Super Stand Long, but animation for that look really cool. And also, I want to point out, you cannot steal the witch, because the witch needs to be spoken in the language of the gods, meaning only Beerus and Wheat could have, or Champa or Vado could have made the witch. As far as we are aware, they are the only characters that would know this language. So I just quickly now need to talk about what Wish was made. Because I'm not going to talk about visuals, because you saw the episode, and you didn't go watch it. The visuals from the Dragon Wish stuffing were amazing. We got to see this one cool scene of them being in all 12 universes. It was, it was just, it was so cool. There's even this one scene of a dragon appeared to eat planet, planet Saturn. That looked really cool. But let me quickly talk about, of course, the Wish. So, Beerus decides not a witch after promising Bulma he wouldn't wish for, like, total destruction of the universe or something. And he tells Wish to repeat the wish. He states the wish in the language of the gods, which I'm not sure this is true, but I heard somebody say the language of the gods is just Japanese backwards. I could be wrong. I will look into that and talk about it in a future video. Maybe this is all going to be an in-depth video when I do my arc review. But that was really interesting, alright? Which, again, I am doing an arc review. But that was really interesting. But we then asked Beerus, are you sure about this with Beerus-sama? And Beerus replied, yes, I'm sure. He had Gwis to make the wish. And then Boma asked, what did you wish for? Beerus refused to tell them, uh, Goku starts about. And you're like harping on it and refuses to stop. So Beerus eventually breaks and tells Goku and the others that he wished for a more comfortable bed. Bulma called and said, Ag, we were all, where we were all thinking, are you an idiot? I could have gotten you a better bed. But then we cut to Team Champa. And Champa and McCube and all of them. And this is where things get amazing. So Vado's staff lights up. And it, 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 Champa's like, what is it? And she shows him a picture of Earth. And he's like, what the hell of it? He got to get pretty pissed off. He's like, what the hell of it? I don't give a damn. I lost. Stop mocking me. And she responds by telling him, Champa Sama, this is actually the planet Earth of Universe 6. Its culture had been fully restored and is almost identical to the culture of the one for Universe 7. And then they see a Super Dragon Ball go by, and it is revealed that Beerus used the witch on the Super Dragon Ball to restore the Earth and um, in Universe 6. He restored the Earth, and so his brother could have all the same types of good food that he had wanted. So his brother got what he wanted. And that is really amazing if you ask me. Now, I do need to quickly talk about the next thing. Where Whis and Beerus are talking, and he pretty much like, Beerus, I'm a why did you? And he's like, Whis, shut the hell up. I'm not talking about it. And I just wanted to make Champa owe me one. Now, I don't know. Now, Beerus does mean this, in my opinion. This will be relevant later on, I can almost guarantee you. There'll be some kind of situation where Beerus will need something, and he'll pretty much tell Champa, I gave you Earth. I gave you all this good food. You're going to do this for me, damn it. That's going to happen. I guarantee it. Well, I don't guarantee it because at the, this isn't any theory. This is Toriyama. So who the hell knows? May, maybe this will never be relevant again. which will piss me off. Yeah. But I'll talk about that when it happens. But yeah, guys, I loved how Beer made the wish for his brother. It really showed that you thought Beer was evil or anything. You were wrong. He isn't. He's just kind of an ass. Oh, there's also a scene afterward where he pretty much thanks Monaka for, you know, being there to motivate Goku and Vegeta. He then gives Monaka a ton of gold, and he pretty much, like, I'm going to keep on using, using you to motivate them. And earlier, he had already promised that Goku and, Mo and Monaka would get the fight. Monaka looked at Beerus. He's freaking terrified. He did not want anything to do with these people. But he nods, and he's like, okay, Beerus Mama, and that is where the episode And at, Of course, we do get a narration and talk about what is to come next. And now the next episode is about Goku and Monaka fighting. I'm not going to talk about that. I could care less. That is obviously the Slice of the Life joke episode. 
unless they knew but Earth Dragon Ball, the Seven Shenlong, and Wish for Monaka to be strong, but I don't see that happening. It probably could be a slice of life episode, a joke episode. It could just as easily be a dream sequence of uh of Goku. But that could be wrong. I don't I don't know. So if I had to rate this episode, I would give it an eight out of ten solely because there wasn't a lot of action. And I was hoping for a little bit of the confrontation between maybe Luna, maybe the Omni King and Chapa and Beerus, or maybe for the Omni King to want to punish them and there should be a fight. I was hoping for some kind of small class that would maybe lead into something later on, but no, there was nothing. I also felt the scene with a Super Dragon, a Super Shenlong, as I like to call him, was a little dragged out, but that is besides the point, that is just my opinion. But guys, don't forget, that's my reasoning for giving it an 8 out of 10. But guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of Dragon Ball Super episode 41. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me all your thoughts in the episode in the comment section down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day.